Hi Taurus, how are you? It's me Lauren B. Welcome to the Untitled Tarot. So I have two decks I want to use for you today, Taurus. I have the Oracle of Mystical Moments, which I want to just pull a little bit of a general energy for you. I did see the Journey card pop out for you in your pre-shuffle. I don't know if it will re-emerge for your general energy, but it might. And I also have the regular Rider weight Tarot for you today. So I'm sitting, there's this feeling of hesitation, Taurus, and it feels like there's something you know you need to be doing, but you're hesitating. And the more you hesitate, the more anxious you get. And the more anxious you get, the more you feel like you're not supposed to be doing something, when in reality, the feeling of anxiousness is being derived from the fact that you're procrastinating. Um... In your visualization, when I sat down in meditation, the first thing I got was a rabbit, a white rabbit. Now, Alice in Wonderland, that could be significant for you. Could be a movie, that could be a book that you really resonate with. There could be some Easter eggs, no pun intended, involved in that for you. Rabbits in general are very symbolic of spring, birth, fertility, multiplication, right? Um, I also got this vision of you uh, kind of in the doorway of a cave. It was this very dark cave and outside it was very bright and you're kind of just in the doorway kind of like peering out like it is clearly spring the energy is there like it's fertile but there's this it's this hesitating feeling I'm getting of you not sure if you want to leave your comfort zone leave the cave the cave is very symbolic of the womb it's very symbolic of a period of isolation where you're learning where you're growing right before you kind of come through the canal and out into the world where things are brighter but they can also be a little bit more startling they can be louder there's more activity there's more energy right you can control a lot more inside the cave than you can outside of it. I also very distinctly heard, Taurus, that the early bird gets the worm. So it feels as though you are tapped into a really abundant energy. It feels like it's just primed for you and you've caught it early. It feels like this is a collective wave that is coming in, but you're, you're catching it early. But the longer you hesitate, someone might come in and catch your worm. And what's for you will always be for you. Yes, of course. But there are specific moments where there are windows of opportunity presented to you. And if you don't take it, it's not as if another window won't come around because it will. But how are you going to feel? Are you going to feel disappointed that you missed an opportunity to catch a worm? To hop through a window of opportunity because you were hesitating or procrastinating? Is that only going to make you feel more anxious and frustrated you see where i'm getting at you you picking up what i'm throwing down here Taurus? all right let's pray let's pray and we'll we'll start pulling a few cards for you very good very good father god thank you for bringing me and my Taurians in for this reading i ask that you give me wisdom clarity and discernment to deliver these messages accurately for taurus's highest of love light alignment and assignment we praise you we love you we thank you always we give you all the glory and the honor for these messages to the utmost I. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, Taurus. We've actually got quite a few little cards on the table. First and foremost is we have a, a long way from home. Now, I think that this is something that you may be perceiving. I'm wondering if you feel as though it's part of this, the darkness of the cave and the brightness of outside, right? It's the feeling of just a few steps forward in your mind is going to take you to a completely different place, completely outside of your comfort zone, where you are happy, where you're situated, where you feel like you have a handle on all of these different things, fully walking into the unknown, and you don't know how far away that's going to take you from said comfort zone, right? I'm wondering, in a way, if you might just be blowing it up beyond proportion. This is a conversation that I've had with a few people in the last few weeks about how like God has given them this really big vision for their life, right? But sometimes they think that big, huge vision is coming in immediately and it can almost startle them into analysis paralysis. They can become frozen and actually never take action on that dream, right? Whereas if you realize 
that sometimes you might get a vision of a big dream or something that could happen for you or a new phase in your life, but you realize that that envision um, is made up of a lot of little steps. It makes it a lot easier to get going and not miss a window of opportunity because the morning dew girl is coming out next, which tells us that sometimes we can prepare for the worst case scenario we can uh, tell ourselves that we are going to be so overwhelmed, that it's going to be so different out there than it is right here. I'm not prepared for it. What if this goes wrong? What if that goes wrong? When in reality, you might get out there and realize it's not that bad. It reminds me of when I was little and my mom sent me to like a summer camp for a really long time. And I was so, I was like, what if I don't make any friends? What if I get bullied? What if I drown in the swimming pool? What if something happens to me? Oh, I'm going to be so far away from home. And I got there and after the first 15 minutes, I was having a ball. It wasn't nearly as bad as I had made it up in my mind, right? Because Eva is coming out next. When I see Eva, it tells me that it's just like a lot of shadow, right? Because the shadow and the ego, they want to keep you comfortable. They want to keep you safe. When you know where you are, your ego and your shadow, they know the barriers. They know the perimeters. They know the good energies. They know the bad energies. They know how to predict certain outcomes and how to deal with it, right? Which helps your ego and your shadow regulate your emotions. Whereas when you walk into the unknown, it doesn't know left from right. And so the ego, the shadow freaks out a little bit. It doesn't know how to keep you safe. But in those moments, it's important to remind yourself that there is a higher power bigger than you, that you do have a higher self, that you are smart, that you are capable, that you do have the ability to be creative and innovative and resourceful and you'll be just as safe if not safer and happier outside of the comfort zone than you are within it right so in many ways you might just need to have a little faith check on the shadow or on the ego and let it know that it's okay it doesn't have to be on guard all the time new is good new experiences are good so let's yeah because i do see the gardener at the bottom of the deck which just talks about needing to kind of weed do a little bit of weeding or a little bit of pruning in your environment, right? Energetically speaking, maybe physically speaking. But let's pull out this Rider Waite and let's see, let's see what the classic cards have to tell us. The early bird gets the worm, Taurus. The early bird gets the worm. Two of Pentacles, two different options. You're juggling these two different options. It's interesting. So. This loop between these two pentacles, it makes that infinity sign, right? And so one, I think in a lot of ways, that kind of confirms what we were talking about, how one option could all of a sudden spiral into an infinity of different things that could happen, good, bad, indifferent, and it can become easily overwhelming when you look too far. I forget whose reading it was. I think it was Cancer's. And what Cancer needed to do was they needed to look at an opportunity, an idea, a download, and they needed to look past it, past the pinnacle, read through the timelines. I actually think for you, Taurus, it's the opposite because reading too far into the future, um, which you do to keep yourself comfortable and give you a sense of control, but I think reading too far into the future is actually doing a disservice for you, right? Because this infinity sign, it also is an eight, a figure eight, just like 35 breaks down to an eight. Um, and eights for me talk a lot about karma so it could be that you're looking too far into the future when weighing different options of should i stay should i go should i go get the worm should i stay in my cave right and that could be uh reinvigorating old karmic cycles and everything is a karmic cycle a timeline is a karmic cycle right it just depends on which side of the spectrum that you're on but you could be reinvigorating old karmic cycles of again procrastination, um, complacency, fear, doubt, self-limiting beliefs, all of that kind of stuff, which is only going to have you sit here and go like this even longer than you already have been, right? And it's just like a bear when it comes out of hibernation instinctually, it knows that it's spring and it knows that it needs to go out and find more resources. And it's the same thing for you. You need to go out and kind of be more proactive in bringing forth the resources that you want, right? So whatever that is for you, however that shakes out. I do see the five of wands in reverse at the bottom of the deck. I did see it peek out of the, the deck before. It's so funny, I wanted to call it the pack. It's not out of the pact. That brings me to like packs, like wolf packs and 
So the five of wands, it talks about conflict. It talks about competition. Not all competition is bad. Some of it can be. So I'm wondering if you have a little bit of imposter syndrome, Taurus, that you perhaps have a fear of criticism from others. They might not like you. They might not understand where you're coming from. They might not have the same vision as you. They might have a different belief structure than you. And before, it's, it's interesting. It's like before they even have an opportunity to criticize you, before they even have an opportunity to reject you, before they even have an opportunity to ignore you, you just take yourself out of the game. Because that's one of the two options. Again, like you could go out into the light, let everyone see you, go do your thing, go enjoy an abundant season that's full of opportunities, things for you to work on, people for you to have exchanges with, right? But on the other side of the coin, what if people don't like you? What if people don't get what you're trying to do and you face criticism? So it's the idea of admitting defeat or submitting to defeat before you even got a chance to play the game and see if you could be victorious, right? It's a self-sabotaging behavior, breaking out of the pack, breaking out of the pack. You know, if you do look at bulls or if you look at buffalo, they are herd animals, right? And so in order for you to do what it is that you feel like you need to be doing, what you know you need to be doing, it may require you, Taurus, in some ways to step outside of the pack. Make yourself a staunch individual in the group, in a, in a group of copies. It may have you in some ways go against the grain of uh, like group think. You might have a fear of outshining people. That's interesting. That's really interesting. It's the idea of if someone is a student being afraid of going out and like setting off on their own course for fear of outshining a teacher that they really loved and admired. That fear of success. So that's interesting. Or by breaking outside of a group, doing more of your own thing, Taurus, you might fear as though you may be pushed out of a group. That's happened to me before. I understand that fear. Queen of Wands in reverse. Some of this has to do with confidence. I have a question for you, Taurus. Is there, is it a possibility that you feel as though you need the others in order for you to be successful or in order to be safe or to feel as though you need the others or you need the pack around you to provide some buffer or to provide some cushion against some of the, uh, the harshness or, you know, like these critical uh, extremities of the world because sometimes we we can do that we have a fear of kind of moving out on our own being our own person speaking our own opinions putting out our own content our own work you know, like all of that because if we do it then we're all by ourselves right there's no passing it off on someone else. There's maybe not other people around to defend you or support you, cheer you on. You're just out there all by yourself. And that could be terrifying. I know I've done it. It could be absolutely terrifying. But is it worth it? Is it more satisfying to believe in yourself so much that the support or the lack of support of others doesn't affect you. There is this feeling that like you can't do it on your own or you need to go with the group or you need the group to support you in what you're doing in order for you to feel comfortable enough to do it. But that will be a blockage for you because sometimes people there's a lot of ways that message should go but sometimes people just won't get what you're trying to do sometimes people don't want you to outshine them 
sometimes you going off and doing your own thing, speaking your own opinion, kind of diverging from the course that you took with others, it can give them a fear. It can trigger some of their insecurities. It can throw them into competition. But you are also not responsible for other people's triggers. But you are responsible for your own blockages. Some of this also might be a very subtle form of like codependent behavior as well. That's what some of it may be. Some of it might not even be nefarious towards. Some of it might just be that you just have some people around you that you were just very comfortable with. You do the same things, you like the same things, right? And to kind of strike out on your own will immediately confront any of the codependent relationships that you have, right? So as like a personal example, I remember when I was bartending for a very, very long, I bartended at the same place for like 10 years and I, I absolutely loved it and I loved everyone that I worked with. And I found a common theme was that a lot of us didn't want to bartend anymore, right? No one really had a great plan. Like no one had a great exit strategy at all. But I remember there being a few times, whether it was me or whether it was other people and, and they we had a good idea, we were gonna do something, right? Um, and then the other people, like I, okay, so it's like me and my sister were gonna buy a cafe, like, I don't know, like five years ago. Um, it was like halfway through my tenure at the bar and I was talking about it and I noticed a lot of people were like, okay, I'll leave the bar, I'll come work with you and your sister. Like, that's what I was gonna, like, that's what we're gonna do, right? We had a codependent relationship, me and some of my friends there. And I never ended up opening up the cafe with my sister and no one else looked for any other work. And it became something, it became a cycle of that where the only way someone was gonna leave is if everyone else came with them. And when I decided to quit my job and start doing this full time, it was really scary for me because I had to confront all of the codependent behaviors that I had. It's not like I had the ability to take on staff. I still don't have staff. This production, I am production right here. <laughs> That's what it is, right? And so I could no longer lean codependently on my girlfriends. They could not lean codependently on me. I had to step forward purely by myself doing something that other people like didn't really understand and that was really scary but in that i became a lot more confident in myself right and so in many ways you could be going through something kind of similar right i don't know if that was a good example justice it's the balancing of the elements for you it feels like there's certain aspects or elements of your being that have atrophied like a muscle because they haven't been put into use just like me in that phase there is an aspect of me that needed to be expressed there was a form of confidence or independence doing something unique completely to me that required me to step outside of the pack and it was hard for me because i felt weak because those muscles had atrophied and only by going out and doing it by stepping into spring coming out of the cave was I able to pleasantly surprise myself when in fact I was over time able to build up the stamina and the confidence to stand on my own two feet. And after a period of time, I was celebrated for that. And so by you balancing your elements, giving yourself an opportunity to create a new normal, to bring balance into your life, to do what is right and what is fair for you, by not allowing yourself to procrastinate, allowing yourself to fully catch a window of opportunity that is there for you. And not by the skin of your teeth, but early. The early bird gets the worm. You ever graduate a class or complete a class by like the skin of your teeth and it's like you did it, but it's not nearly as satisfying as like when you finish it with high marks because you got everything in on time. It's that kind of feeling. Move through this window of opportunity quickly don't wait for it. Because again, as I was saying in your meditation energies, the longer you wait, the more anxious you're going to get. But you will interpret that anxiety as a warning signal not to move. When in fact, it is only the feeling of pressure from your higher self trying to get you to move forward into the next chapter. You can reread this past chapter of your life if you want. It's your book. But I have the sense that you're ready to move on to a new story. But it does require you, as I said, to go and catch that worm. Walk through that window of opportunity. Be early 
Don't be late. And be a little bit brave. You could do it. I believe in you. Ten of Cups at the top of the deck. It's experiencing a new form of emotional fulfillment. That's a different muscle that you haven't used. This is a reintroduction to the community, to your community. A little allow me to reintroduce myself. I love that for you. I think it's overdue, honestly. And it's a new level of appreciation that you're going to grow for yourself. And I, I honestly, I think it's a new level of appreciation that other people will have for you as well. When we go and we live out our dreams, in many ways, we give people permission to do the same things for themselves. Monkey see, monkey do. Go reintroduce yourself, Taurus. Catch that worm. See what happens. So, I'm going to leave this here for you. I am going to go do an extended reading. If you are interested in your extended reading or if you're interested in your December monthly reading, those will be the top two links in the description box. Consider joining us over on Patreon. I do host a spiritual development workshop. Patreons are kicking ass over there. We're doing some really cool stuff. I do offer personal readings. If you would like some personal assistance on your journey, my booking information is below. I love you very much. I appreciate you being here. Be nice to yourselves. Be kind to each other. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.